What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is going to answer two very important questions. Why did Palpatine feel the need to rename the Republic as an Empire? And if he did that, why keep the Imperial Senate? We'll answer both in this video since the reasoning for them are intertwined. The question comes from the idea that since Palpatine already had absolute power over the Republic via the emergency powers, why was there a need to change the title? This surely would just alarm everyone, which would just make rebellion more likely. Why not just leave it as a Republic in name, while continuing to act like a dictator? But also, if you are going to dismantle the Republic and rule as an Emperor, then why leave in place the Senate? It was now just an obsolete branch of the government, so why would you want an Imperial version? What does an Imperial Senate even do if you're an absolute ruler? Well, let's address all of this in order, starting with the emergency powers. Remember, they were just that, powers granted because of an emergency. With the Clone Wars at an end, there was no emergency, and remember what Palpatine said that fateful day in the Senate Rotunda. The power you give me, I will lay down when this crisis has abated. So after a while, people will start looking around saying, okay buddy, I think it's about time you lay down those powers, and we continue on with our normal Supreme Chancellor elections. By essentially creating a second emergency, which was the Jedi's treasonous attempt to try and take control of the Republic, he made the galactic population think that this whole system was just too fragile and in need of reworking. So this was the only time that such a drastic transition could work. That brings us to the question, why did he need to change the name? Well, a simple reason is that if you're going to be a dictator over distant areas, by definition, you're an emperor, and so you have to call it an empire. But to that point, it wasn't just a name change. Two very important new governmental elements were introduced, Sector Governors, and the Imperial Ruling Council. This was a natural transition out of the Clone Wars, which just goes to show the level of genius that Palpatine had, that every aspect of his plan served so many different functions. Check out this Legends map of how the Republic split the galaxy up into sectors during the war, a concept that has been retained in canon. The Sector armies were responsible for keeping the peace in these regions, and reporting back to a war council which included Palpatine and Top Jedi. Now under Imperial rule, these sectors would be led by Moffs, and report to the Emperor and his Imperial ruling council. Those were all the weirdos you see hanging around Sheev. They were all a bunch of yes-men, so essentially, Republic veterans that were extremely loyal to the Emperor were promoted to the position of Moff, and everyone in the council just went along with Palpatine's decisions. During the time of the Republic, Senators were loyal to their system. It was much more local. The Alderaan system, for example, would have Bail Organa to represent them, who of course had deep ties to the planet of Alderaan. With Moffs covering these vast areas of space, their loyalty was to no individual planet or system, but to the man that gave them this enormous power, the Emperor. Again, the Clone Wars was necessary to make this palatable by the public, as it was seen that Palpatine led the Republic to victory against the enormously powerful CIS, while simultaneously fighting off a coup by the Jedi Order. And the Separatists just so happened to be led by an ex-Jedi, so maybe there was even some evil conspiracy at work here. But the one thing that was simple to understand was that Palpatine was the man who knew how to keep peace. So let's just leave that whole system in place. Really, if you think about it, the only thing that would have been outrageous would have been if he sent all the Senators home on that same day. This really might have incited an alliance of different systems to oppose him. A sort of second Separatist movement just hours later, and keep in mind that would be a faction that Palpatine wouldn't secretly be controlling. By leaving the Senate in place for around 20 years, the planet still had their normal elections to put in place new Senators. They still had the illusion of an impact on government. Because there are so many competing interests in the Senate, no matter which way the Emperor chose, he would end up doing what many Senators wanted. From the point of view of the public, and probably even a lot of Senators, laws were getting passed for and against their interests at the same ratio as before. So though technically a dictator, they still felt like they were being heard. Two decades of this meant roughly a whole generation grew up with this system as normal, which would help the next part of his plan go smoothly. The final piece of Sidious's grand plan really is the Death Star, because as soon as that becomes fully operational, the Imperial Senate is disbanded. Moffs aren't loyal to individual planets, and now if any planet gets out of line, they can be easily and completely destroyed. Or as Tarkin explains it, The Imperial Senate will no longer be of any concern to us. How will the Emperor maintain control without the bureaucracy? The regional governors now have direct control over their territories. Fear will keep the local systems in line. Fear of this battle station. 
To prove this Tarkin doctrine, they would take the most vocal of dissenters and turn this superweapon on Alderaan. Bail Organa had been one of the leading voices of dissent, even being a co-creator of the Delegation of 2000 during the Clone Wars, which sought to rein in those emergency powers. And it didn't help that their senator and princess Leia was constantly being linked back to rebel cells. Of course, we know how this plan backfired, but hopefully I was able to lay out how it all made sense. If you have any other questions, be sure to put them down in the description. But I also have a couple questions for you guys. Do you think a second Separatist movement might have formed if he immediately disbanded the Senate? And where do you think the Death Star would have struck after Alderaan? The Delegation of 2000 was co-founded by Mon Mothma of Chandrilla, who was also leading the Rebel Alliance by then, so I could definitely see this place turning into dust. Padme became a thorn in his side, and Naboo was always pacifist, so do you think Big Palpy would have turned the super laser on his own homeworld? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. If you want to connect with us, help support the channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make these videos, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, if good people can't provide security, bad people will. And the Force will be with you, always.